Oh, welcome everybody to Ignite Humanity Live. Here I am again, Lady JB. So excited to show up and share with you ways to ignite humanity. You know, every day before the show, I take a moment to ask myself, what do people need to hear? And today the word that came to me was ease. It's Friday. It's all about solutions, but also it feels like many of us need to just ease into today, just be in the sense of ease, to calm, to relax, to take a moment, to just allow some things that are unimportant to just filter away. We're making so much stress on ourselves to get everything perfect, to rush, to race, to be, to perform, to do, to show up, to post. And the truth is, in many ways, what we really need is to just be in our ease. How do we make it easier for ourselves? How do we make less work instead of more work? How do we allow ourselves to enjoy, to just breathe, to trust, to see, to, to allow it to unfold and to permeate instead of rushing through it to the next thing and to the next thing and to the next thing? Fridays are always such great days because it's the end of the week. We've worked hard this week, and so today is a nice day to be in ease. It doesn't mean you don't get things done. It just means you get them done with a bit more grace and a bit more relaxation and a bit more pride in yourself. Really give yourself some congratulations today for the things you've done. Pat yourself on the back. It's so easy. You just reach your arms out, cross them over, give yourself a little pat on the back because you are absolutely doing a good job. And potentially, if you're listening to the show, it means you may need a little reminder to bring some ease into your life today and literally enjoy enjoy today absolutely enjoy well we show up every day every day of the week to help you feel inspired in ways that you can ignite humanity we all have to come together to make an effort to ignite humanity and we want to do it with ease grace and love and so i bring guests onto the show every single day to talk about ways that they are igniting humanity and maybe it's not in big, gigantic ways. It's in small, little, incremental ways that is making an impact one person at a time. Now, these people have this ability to ignite humanity, which we all have, but they've done it in a way as they've moved through their own story. They've taken trials and tribulations in their lives and the lessons that they've learned to use that to be a gift and a guide and a blessing to somebody else to just touch their lives in a way that makes them feel like a better person, makes the other feel person feel like a better person, makes the next person feel like a better person. And that is going to raise the vibration of humanity and make a difference for all of us. All right, well, let's meet our fabulous guest for today. Karen Rosser is a, is, was born in St. Louis, Missouri and grew up in Chicago, Illinois. She holds a Bachelor of Science degree in biology from, please allow me to say it, Tuskegee University and a master's degree in human resource management from Troy State University. Karen was commissioned as an air defense artillery officer in the United States Army in February of 2018 and has served over 24 years before retiring in 2012. A phenomenal, phenomenal achievement. She loves working with the homeless and as a trained volunteer supporting her local shelters. She really is a person devoted, which is another word for today, in creating connections and community. And I'm so blessed to welcome her to the show. Thank you, Lady JB, for this opportunity to, to talk today on uh, Ignite Humanity Live. So I'm thank happy to you. be here. Well, thank you for being here. And you know, I always sort of dial into the vibe of the show and I've spent some time with you and I've got to know you and you do have a beautiful ease to yourself. And you've been in a very difficult job, let's say. You've been under a lot of, I'm sure in the military, there's a ton of pressure and there's a ton of expectations and things are very regimented in my opinion. But it seems like every time I meet you, every time I spend time with you, listening to you, you have such a great mm, disposition towards making it easy, you know, really enjoying it and just bringing this wonderful, I don't, it's an incredible word, like just confidence and ease into what you do. Is that a fair assessment of you? Would you look at yourself that way? <laughs> I would say yes, that is yeah. a fair assessment assessment of me. I do enjoy um, helping people. I, I enjoy people. I am a people person. Mm. And I think that um, there is good in everyone. They might not show it, but there is good qualities 
in everyone and you can find them. And I believe that, you know, you just treat people the way you want to be treated. Just kindness goes a long way. A, a smile, a good morning, a hello. You never know how that affects someone's day that may be having a bad day. It's really true. I mean, I, I love what you just said. There is good in everyone. And sometimes we just have to look for it or sometimes we just have to be a mirror of it. We have to show up in our own way so that they can it can reflect in them. You've done a lot. And I, I really want to have this great conversation with you about your career because I haven't had a guest on the show that has such an extensive career in the military. Can you make the connection between what you've been doing for the last 23 years and how that has really set you up for igniting humanity because there's so many pieces to that and so many layers that I feel like could really help our listeners understand how being so committed and devoted to your to service helps others and ignites humanity. So I spent 24 years as an army officer in the, in the army. I believe that I touched many lives. I was a mentor. Uh, I always treated people as I wanted to be treat, treated. We go to the field. Uh, we have field exercises. I've deployed to several places. Um, I can remember uh, visiting soldiers uh, that were wounded in when I was in Iraq. I would go to the to the hospital every Sunday just to visit them, talk to them. Hey, can I get you anything? Didn't know them, but it's always good to, you know, have compassion for others. I think that um, the opportunity for me to be in the military just, it was great. I learned so much. I met some fabulous people and I have lifelong uh, friendships with. I may not talk to them every day, but I do, when we do talk, we just pick up from where we left off. Mm -hmm. And so I do believe, I, I was just happy to serve. I, I joined the military because I wanted to stay in college. Yeah, talk a little bit about that. What was the Ignite moment that said, I'm going to be in the military? So the Ignite moment was I, my mother, dro we drove to Tuskegee, my mother, and my godfather. We drove to Tuskegee on a Saturday. I remember she dropped me off at my dorm. We unloaded. Everyone else's parents were there too, unloading them in their dorm rooms. She left me there with $20 because that's all she had. And she said, um, I'll send you money when I get paid, you know, this next week. And she, bought, we stopped at KFC and she bought me a bucket of chicken until the, the dining facility would be open on Monday. But when she left, all I did was I, after I finished organizing my room, I went down the hall and I just started meeting people. I just said, hello, my name is Karen. I was Gooch then. My name is Karen Gooch. I'm from Chicago. How are you? And I just went on from there and I made friends and we're still lifelong friends. Mm. So it was a humbling experience. Um, I just knew that I wanted to go to Tuskegee. I went to an all-girl Catholic high school. We visited some of the um, very... Um, prestigious universities when I was in high school. We, uh, Purdue, Indiana State, Notre Dame, uh, Northwestern. And I we read about Tuskegee in my English literature class and Booker T. Washington. And I was like, oh, I said, I think I'm going to try this university. I did apply for other universities, but I, I chose Tuskegee. And I'm happy I did because I was able to, uh, you know, learn Black history, uh, meet some fabulous people from the South and uh, we l make lifelong friendships. Well, I think it's neat because you read about something in a book and then that kind of sparked a, a thought which created an action which literally changed the, the course of your life. And I think that's so neat. And of course, as a publisher, I'm all about books and I'm all about books changing lives. But it's a great example of you read something and something about that just became this mission and this idea to go to that university. So wonderful. I also like what you said that you stepped forth, you made it your initiative to speak to people. And I think that that also is a quality of igniting humanity. We can't wait and sit back and expect everyone to come to us going out and saying hello and making friendships. That's what sparks 
this connection that we need more of. We need more connections, I think, on the planet. And you saying like, I just started talking to people. That's a great example. That's a great solution for many people who are looking to ignite humanity. And again, today is all about connections. So it's a wonderful example of how to create connections. And so university um, continued. And then something inside of you decided that the army was your next path. I joined the, the military. I joined Army ROTC at Tuskegee University so they could pay my tuition. They offered me um, full tuition, room and board. I knew my mother couldn't afford Tuskegee at that time. And so um, I went on ahead and, and took that scholarship. The only thing I wanted to do when I was offered the scholarship was jump out of planes. <laughs> I did have that opportunity to jump out of airplanes five times. And uh, I always said I was only going to do four years and that was it. And I ended up doing 24 years. Incredible. 24 years. Thank you. I said 23. So 24 correction. I also want to point out that being, a, you know, a young, just out of high school individual dropped off at college with $20. It must have been a bit of a scary moment. It mu there must have, I mean, talk about the courage and the tenacity. What was going through your mind at that time? I, I was I was like, this is all I have is $20. So I said, I have to make this $20 last until I get some more money. But I just had some, when I started meeting people and their parents were there, um, I believe one of my um, uh, people, one of the dorm mates, uh, mother took us out to eat and she invited me and I was like, yeah, she paid for the food. And I was like, woo, okay, good. Uh, but I knew that I would be going to the, uh, cafeteria on campus on Monday. So, mm. and I could eat there. So I was, I was happy about that, but it, it was scary to just only have $20 back, back then in, in, in 1983. Wow. Yeah. And what I love about that also is that you decided like you weren't going to let that define you. You weren't going to let that hold you back. You weren't going to let that be the deciding factor on if you were going to succeed or not. And I think that is something that a lot of our viewers can relate to is that when we don't have what everyone else has, it doesn't define us. It doesn't, it doesn't set our future. What we have now doesn't determine what we have tomorrow. Can you speak a little bit about that? Yes. Yeah, so I do remember um, when I was at Tuskegee, some of my meals were like a honey bun and a little small. They used to spell, uh, sell the small pints of ice cream, honey bun and chocolate ice cream. And that was a good meal or either, you know, some ramen noodles or a cup of soup. And that was a good meal. I struggled through college um, financially. But once I joined uh, Army ROTC, it was a, a the burden was lifted off my mother. My mother always wanted to make sure that she provided me more than than she had. And, and I really appreciated that. I, I really did. Mm, you have so much love and honor for your mom. I'll share with our audience that you have written your story about yes. your experience, a little bit about your mom. Do you want to talk about writing in an Ignite book? What was that like? It was, I was scared at first because I said, I am not an author. I do not write. But I can tell you this, um, I'm happy I took that journey. There's no judgment there. I was vulnerable. I could just let myself be free and tell my story. And the staff there, they work with you very well. Um, they assist you. They're there for you. So it made it easier for me to say, okay, I can write my story. And I actually started writing my story on an airplane ride when I was coming back for, uh, from a trip for work. I just opened up my phone and went to the notes page and just started writing. Sentences didn't make sense. I just had thoughts and I just put them down. And then I came back home and then, you know, they give you a deadline and I was up against that deadline. So I said, okay, I got to burn some midnight oil. I need to write. And uh, you have uh, editing sessions, which are great. They kind of help you uh, just bring your story full circle. And, and I believe that um, my story is uh, one that, you know, I, I talked about my mom and, uh, and just, you know, she's my forever Valentine That's the, and, and my first love. Mm. 
Yeah. That's, I love that you say that because my mom's name is Valentine. <laughs> See, synergy all around. Well, congratulations, of course, for writing your story. You're about to be published. You, your book will come out in June. That's so fantastic. Your chapter in the book shares about your relationship and your Ignite moment with your mom. And it is a really beautiful story, folks. I encourage you to get a copy of that book and read Karen's story. Is there something now, now that you're retired, that you're committed to and that you love doing to help ignite humanity? Yes, I, I love helping others. Uh, I took a training session to work at, um, to volunteer at the Orlando shelter. Uh, any opportunity where there's, um, you, I can help somebody, either homeless, uh, women's shelter, if they need clothing, shoes, I'm there for it. I believe that um, at, at some point in our life, we're all going to need somebody. And it's okay to help people that, you know, may not have more than you have or that's less fortunate than you are. Because some I think sometimes we think our problems are, oh, just so dire. But when you look at somebody else, their problems, they're, they're worse off than, than you could ever phantom. You probably couldn't do some of the things that they've been through um, or even live through some of the things that they've been through. So mm -hmm. I'm all about helping people, no matter who they are. I think that, you know, in our society today, people lack kindness for, for our fellow brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. I think that we, we you know, we, we're so judgmental about people. You know, we, we look at people and we make, make faces at them or, you know, if they're dressed funny or if they don't look like us. And I just think that, you know, a little bit of kindness goes a long way because you never know. Everybody you meet is fighting some kind of battle, mm. whether they tell it to you or not, they are. And so it's, it's good to, I greet people every morning. I say, good morning. Some people say hello and some people don't say a word. I, you know, I don't take it personal. I just say, okay, they're not a morning person. I'm a morning person. <laughs> <laughs> and you're a giving person. And, you know, it's wonderful that you don't take it personal because if it's because it's about you. You want to say hello. You want to reach out. You want to make a connection. And I'm sure many times you've reached out and made a connection and it's formulated into something kind of wonderful. It's turned into a bigger purpose, a bigger mission, a bigger friendship. I think that's the 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 beauty and the magic of reaching out and, and showing kindness and connecting with people because you never know who you're going to meet and you never know how that one hello is going to turn into something kind of magical. Exactly. I, mm -hmm. I totally agree. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so um, there's a lot of different ways that people can help each other. I used to think, and maybe you can um, agree, that help meant helpless. When somebody, if I wanted to ask for help, it meant that I was helpless. And so I spent a lot of years in my life not asking for help because I didn't want to think that I was helpless. I was strong. I could do it. I could figure it out. But there was a time in my life when I realized that help means helpful, because if I need help, somebody could be helpful. Maybe they could give me an idea that I couldn't think of. They could get me there faster. They could uh, share information that it would take me so much longer to obtain. And so this idea of help turning into helpful actually became a big game changer for me, a little bit of an Ignite moment, because when people were helping me, it was helpful. It wasn't because I was helpless. And I use that now when I think about helping others. How can I be helpful, not because they're helpless, but because I'm going to help them move forward? And uh, I just wanted to share that because I was to make my differentiator between helpful and helpless. Yeah, it's nothing wrong with asking for help. Well, I believe there's nothing wrong for a in asking for help because we don't know everything. And you may, you may meet somebody or, or to have a conversation with somebody that could solve an issue for you just in having that conversation. I, you know, I, I believe that we have, uh, for me, I have certain girlfriends. I know who I can travel with. I know who I can shop <laughs> with. And I know who I can, uh, you know, talk to about my personal things that, and I know that it won't be repeated. And so I do reach out to people, even at work. I mean, I, uh, I do program management uh, at work, but I work with engineers and uh, medical uh, personnel, SMEs, and um, 
I asked them for help. I was like, hey, how do you do this? Because I just don't know. Make me smart on this. <laughs> because we, we, we don't know everything. So I don't think um, asking for help is a bad thing. I think uh -huh. it's a good thing. Good things can come from it. I'm going to use that. Make me smart on this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, you know, it's great because it's always nice to find people that are smarter than you in their expertise. You are super smart in your expertise, but you can't be smart and expert at everything. So make me smart on this. I'm going to use that with some people. And I love finding people who are smarter than me on certain things because they, they do pull you forward. They do help you um, learn faster, quicker, get there sooner. And that's a great one. I love it. Well, we have seven principles of igniting humanity. And the one that sort of draws me is called live authentically and with genuine integrity. When I think of you, I think of that principle. Can you elaborate live authentically and with genuine integrity, how that principle you feel ignites humanity? You just, you have to be yourself. You have to live your life. You can't live for anybody else. You know, pe people are going to talk about you regardless if you're doing good or bad, you just have to be yourself, be intentional and just live your life. I, I live my life every day, live it every day. Did my feet touch the ground and I, I get the opportunity to see another day. I thank the Lord and I say, I'm on my way. You know, it's good to go to work happy. Even if you don't like your job, you still got to go in there happy. So when I go to work in the morning, and I get to the work, I put my bag in my office and I walk around and I say, hello, how are you today? How was your evening? I walk around to everyone that works for me and ask them how they're doing. And then I go back to my office and I do my work. They always mm -hmm. like, you're, you're such a morning person. I was like, well, you know, you got to start off. I'm happy to be alive, you know? So I just think that you just, you know, grab life by the horns and and move out with it. Can There's you imagine? times when... You know, you just you encounter some some shortfalls or get some disappointments, but don't be worried about the dis disappointments. Thank God. Hey, thank you for this opportunity. And I learned from it and let's move on. I was thinking, like, imagine how different the world would be, how different corporate would be, businesses would be if the boss and, you know, the managers and everyone, the janitor all said, good morning. How was your day? Good morning. Nice to see you. And just created this real exciting positivity in the morning. I used to work on a cruise ship and part of our job every single morning is if you made eye contact with someone, you had to say good morning. And so when you're on a ship, there's like, you know, people every two steps. So I had this thing where I would just make it into a song like good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning to you and you and you and you. And then I'd get through a few people and then I'd move on. And it just became infectious because people would start every day looking forward to my song and then they would start singing it. And so my kids now do it because I do it all the time. So there is this real frequency that you um, can inject into people with this positivity. I love, love, love that suggestion. And when you said like <clears throat> tough things happen and there's a reason behind them, I think every single person on the planet can resonate with that. Give us your last and final suggestions and ideas how we can create connection and get through today with more ease and grace. Uh, it's just been so great to have you on the show. And I would just love people to get that, that real cemented words of wisdom from Karen. Thank you, Lady JB. I just say that, you know, love people for who they are. You know, sometimes people are rational. Um, you just have to love them. You just have to love them. Be happy, be intentional about what you're doing, and just live your life. Live your life, not somebody else's life. Live your life. Connect with people and help others. People are out there struggling, and if you can help, help them. Mm. And thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for this opportunity. You have poured into me today. You have made me feel wonderful. We're going to put up on the screen how people can find you and connect with you in case they would just love to get more of the wonderful juiciness that you share. You can visit Karen at the link below and get to know her more. Thank you, gorgeous. You're beautiful. You're shining the light today. Thank you so much for showing up on Ignite Humanity Live. Have a fantastic rest of your day. You too. Thank you, Lady JB. You got it. 
Well, Karen just filled my soul this morning and made me feel wonderful. And I hope that she also inspired you because you know what? It isn't that complicated. It doesn't need to be that hard. And the best advice was just let go of some of the anger and resentment you may be holding and just trust people, love people, see that they're doing the best job that they can and just move on with your life because you being happy and you stepping into you and you walking through your day with happiness and joy that your feet are on the ground and you've got another day to be alive and impact others. That's truly what it's about. Why hang on to grudges or any of the things that are holding you back? Just move forward with grace and ease and joy and appreciate one another and show some kindness. Show some absolutely kindness. Kindness is free and so it's easy to give out as much as you can. Well, we appreciate you coming to Ignite Humanity Live. If you'd like to be on our show and share some of the words of wisdom that you have or an Ignite moment that has changed your life and you are igniting humanity in some way, please fill out our type form and let us know who you are. Tell us what you're up to and we would love to have you be a part of Igniting Humanity with us. If you'd like to know all the things we're up to, check out our website because we're doing a lot to ignite humanity and we would love for you to be a part of it a part of our compilation book many of our guests have shared that they have written their stories karen wrote a beautiful story about her uh, losing her mother a very special loving caring wonderful story that will definitely ignite your life and of course if you have a story we would love to have you be a part of one of our books we have ignite humanity coming up we also have ignite your purpose coming up and ignite your courage which is all incredible stories of heartfelt heart-centered people having those ignite moments and becoming vict uh, victors and heroes in their story well of course if you would like to help us out with the things that we're doing to ignite humanity we are building schools overseas and we're always looking for people to donate a little bit of love care and and some dollars into our Ignite Humanity uh, School of Hope that we're building overseas. Every single dollar that you donate buys a brick in one of our schools. So please take a moment to click on the link below and just offer a little bit because you could ignite the life of a child uh, learning education and school, learning how to read and how to step into. And you never know. Look at Karen. She went to read a book and it changed her life, went to school and it changed her life. We want to do that for kids around the globe. And last but not least, least. Of course, if you want to watch this episode or any of our episodes, we've got a lot in our vault. That's right. We have a very special portal where you can go and watch all of our episodes. Of course, you can also go to Traverse TV and look at our VOD channel. You can check us out on YouTube and we also air on Facebook Live. So go see what we're up to in the Ignite community. Go check out JB Owen and see what she's doing. We want to welcome you into the fold to Ignite your life and the lives of others. We're a very special cool group of people. In fact, I met an amazing gentleman, Doug, the other day, and he said, you must be a PLU. And I'm like, what's a PLU? And he's like, people like us, people like us who want to ignite humanity. We welcome you. We want to see you. So PLU on over to ignitehumanity.life and be a part of a community doing something wonderful. All right. Blessings, everybody. See you on Monday. Now, more than ever, we need to come together to connect with one another. We need to feel the truth in who we are and let go of everything that's happened in the past. We need to empower every person on the planet and awaken hearts, enliven souls, come together, laugh, play, rejoice, connect, create, and love. It's time to ignite humanity. We want you to be a part of something that will impact the future for everyone. We want you to tell your story, share your Ignite moment, show people who you truly are. Be a part of igniting humanity and making a difference in the world and all of our futures. <laughs>